What's up, folks? My name's Justin Kana, and I've always wanted to be able to plate with chopsticks. Throughout my whole career as a chef, I've always used these and looked up to these. And then I thought to myself, Justin, you're smart enough to do this. Let's fucking learn how to plate with chopsticks. So I reached out to Abe over at eatingtools.com and I said, hey, I like your chopsticks. And I also like reviewing cool chef gear on my YouTube channel. And you literally have the largest and most unique collection of high-end handcrafted chopsticks in the world at eatingtools.com. So let's collaborate. And he sent me two kinds, these beautiful moribashis handmade by Isaiah Schrader over in Wisconsin. And then these, these are called tea sticks. These are titanium chopsticks. So naturally I unboxed them. Well, we were supposed to write a menu, but this bad boy came in the mail and it's been a couple weeks waiting on this collaboration. So we're just gonna get right into it. <laughs> he told me the unboxing was gonna be that exciting. From New York City, from these guys. Oh, so soft. Don't drop it. Hear them. Okay, there's one. There's two. Any guesses to what we're working with yet? Abe, you lied to me, man. You're like, this isn't a fun unboxing experience, but I'm having a great time. Oh, Abe. Look at those. They're so heavy. I love that. All right, second one. This is like that thing that they put inside of your laptop, but it's like the whole package is wrapped in that. Oh look, these come in like a case. Can you read that? It says tea sticks. Woo! All right, there we have it. Then I proceeded to call Isaiah on the phone to get his story behind how he makes these chopsticks and what goes into crafting something like this. I just think it's super awesome that you can literally call up on the phone the guy who made the tools that you're holding in your hand. Plus he's from Wisconsin and so am I. Hello. Hey Isaiah. How's it going Justin? Good man, how are you? Good. Pleasure to finally talk to you. Thanks for, uh, yeah, you thanks for taking my call. Where did the the making chopsticks, the Morabashi chopsticks specifically, come from for you? I had a customer who I had done several knife handles for, and he wanted me to make some handles for his Morabashi to customize them. And I just thought I could make the whole thing and you know do it from scratch. It might actually be a little easier. And then you just kind of kept doing them because Abe kind of was able to create that demand with his shop. Yeah. Is is a, is eating tools the only place where you'll find your chopsticks? Um, I occasionally will do like a special edition one on my website. But yep. Other than that, yeah. Awesome. Uh, and they're all obviously handmade. I'm literally holding a pair um, that has the blue wood with like a little bit of um, like other like darker brown wood accents in it. Is there kind of uh -huh. a cool story that goes behind this specific pair. I just love the, the fact that like you have actually touched every single pair that you, you make. Yeah, so I think that is blue curly maple and African black wood, right? Yep, exactly. I don't know, I just always try to find, uh, you know, nice contrasting woods and good combos that colors that look good together. For this video, I'm going to kind of attempt to use these chopsticks to plate some stuff. Is there anything that I need to know? Like I can use chopsticks to eat, you know, Chinese food out of a container and I can use tweezers to plate stuff, but I haven't, you know, tried to plate an entire service with Morabashi's. So is, what, what do I need to know? <laughs> well, I'm actually excited to see how you use them. I, you know, it's, I have never actually used a pair of them myself because I don't do that type of cooking. Yep. I'm hoping you'll tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had the pleasure of actually putting them through the test. I had several dinners since I got these chopsticks and I did a real world review on them. I thought, how can I learn how to use these in actual dinner service style situations? We do between six and 12 courses at our dinners, so I got a ton of experience with these tools. Literally at one of the pop-ups, I forgot my tweezers and I had to use the chopsticks, so I was forced to sink or swim. Cue the montage. I'm out here in a beautiful setting, out here, a little tiny garden, and currently grilling some shiitake mushrooms, giving these a try to uh, give me some practice, and basically how to get these chopsticks 
to work for me. So after all that, I wanted to sit down and give you a review slash recap on these amazing tools, including comparing them to these, your hands, as well as comparing them to these, specifically these bad boys from JB Prints. These are just the standard offset tweezers that I'm sure some of you already have. I just have them in gold because why not? I'm gonna move over and make room for our handy dandy chart complete with creepy stock photo of hands and let's just get right into it. Category one, ergonomics and feel. You can't really beat the tactile feeling of handling food with your fingers, so definitely five out of five in that category for your hands. Next up, we've got our tweezers. These have kind of a wider opening or they sort of taper off into the tip. That has a really nice feeling on my fingers. The length is also really good on these. I prefer longer tweezers just because you get a little bit more versatility. You can actually cook with them and plate with them. So I gotta give these a four out of five in ergonomics. All right, now let's talk about chopsticks just for a second because I hold mine kind of weird. I personally do this move. I know you're supposed to do this move. And I've done it before in restaurants where I'm eating out and I try that move and I just get frustrated. So I always naturally go back to the way that I naturally hold them. I just feel like that was meant to be said to take that into account when we're talking about ergonomics. So the T-sticks, these are surprisingly comfortable to hold. I really, really enjoy the fact that they have the notch here right in the middle. That is where my fingers naturally kind of rest when they're holding. That's where the color separation is as well. The weight is also extremely well distributed and the balance on these is prime. I also wanna give a quick shout out to the length of the T-sticks. They're just about an inch longer than the tweezers themselves. That also means that they feel pretty similar in my hand compared to the tweezers. So four out of five on ergonomics for me for the T-sticks. Oh, the Moribashis. These guys have a very similar feeling to this T-sticks where there's a notch here where the metal meets the wood and that is where my fingers naturally started to come to rest. That is definitely my tip number one in using these chopsticks for plating is that you always need to have a reference point to know that the tip is gonna come together at the same point because that's crucial in being able to make sure that you can grab things. And that's where I kind of come to my first negative point about these and this is definitely due to my skill level. These Moribashi specifically are a little bit too long for me. They just, based on my hand size and my skill with chopsticks right now, they are a little bit awkward to hold, especially comparing them to the T-sticks that are much shorter and more manageable. I mean, you can go ahead and look here at the length of the chopsticks where I compare all three of them side by side. You can definitely see that the Moribashis are significantly longer than the other two tools. However, these came in extremely handy when I was doing anything cooking related. So anything that dealt with a grill or any oil, Safety first, you're staying a little bit further away from the hot stuff. Three out of five for me on the ergonomics. All right, category two, ease of use. Hands, I've been using these my whole life. Five out of five. Next up, the tweezers. I've been using these for a couple of years, so for me, they're super easy to use. I'm gonna give them a four out of five just because if you've ever seen someone use tweezers for the first time, you see it can be a little bit awkward trying to get the handle on it. All right, T-sticks. Using these is not really a pain in the ass, but this video is all about plating with chopsticks, so just because of the fact that I personally need more practice, Ease of use, three out of five. Next up, the Moribashis. These are like level 10 expert difficulty level on these guys. Chefs train their whole lives trying to get better and better at using these. I've had these chopsticks for about a few weeks. I've used them considerably and I'm still not quite there with them. So I gotta give these one out of five on easy use. But that's the point, I think. I really think it displays your level of skill when you can get good at using these. So I don't want you to see one out of five as a bad thing at all. It's really hard to use these Moribashi chopsticks to plate. Category three, build quality and design. Uh, my hands weren't built, I was born with them, and I can't really change anything about them, but they've been working solidly for 25 years. So we're gonna go with five out of five. Tweezers, this is a really interesting interesting one because looking at these, they're more or less just two pieces of colored stainless steel wedged, uh, fused together here at the hinge. You can tell there wasn't a ton of like craftsmanship or artisanship put into these bad boys. Asterisk though, I feel like that is just the point of these. They have one job and they do it very, very well. After years of using these, they still come to a point as they should. There's the little notches on the inside so that they can grab food effectively. So am I disappointed with the build quality? No. Do they feel kind of mass produced and commoditized? 
yes. Four out of five for build quality on the tweezers. Next up, the T-Sticks. I feel like you can make a similar argument here with the mass-produced quality of these. These are actually hand-finished each one by one by one, which is pretty awesome. These are also made with USA-sourced 6AL4V medical-grade titanium. And like I said, they're hand-finished one by one, so they are kind of special in their own right. So while they aren't 100% handmade, they definitely have that high quality feel to them and you can sense it when you pick them up with the nice weight of them. The titanium is incredibly high quality and it's basically not gonna corrode no matter what you do to it. It's some of the highest quality materials you can make tools out of. I personally love the circular accents going on on them, even though it's kind of a pain in the ass if you get food in any of these to clean it out, but it feels really nice in the hand. I'm also a big fan of the color. When's the last time you used purple chopsticks? This area down towards the tip where the texture changes, that's very similar to the tweezers where you get more tactile when you're touching the food. The tea sticks don't come all the way down to a razor sharp point. That definitely assists me, someone like me in picking up the food and moving it from point A to point B. Four out of five in build quality for me for the tea sticks. <laughs> Damn, Isaiah, you crush these. Build quality is amazing here on these Moribashi chopsticks. You go up into amazing quality wood towards the handles and there's definitely a different distinguishable grain on both of them so no two pairs are alike. Not even each chopstick is the same. The weight is super good. The wood feels warm in your hands. He even went as far as to use textures very similar to the tea sticks down here on the, the tips of the chopsticks to give you that tactile feel. And I didn't baby any of these tools. I've used these through several dinner services and they still look brand new. So build quality, five out of five. Category four, badassness. Dude, no one thinks it's badass to play with your hands. One out of five. Tweezers. Man, I thought it would be awesome to plate food with tweezers when I first started off because nine times out of 10, you kind of graduate to that level, right? You're, it's usually your second or third restaurant. You're starting to get a little bit more high end. You're focusing on plating more so you'll start to use tweezers. And then when I got there, I discovered that it was it was pretty easy. It was You effectively got the handle on it pretty fast. However, plating with tweezers is still kind of badass, so three out of five. The tea sticks, it's kind of a given. If I saw someone plating with titanium purple chopsticks, I'd think that was pretty badass. Four out of five. Next up, and you probably know where I'm going with this, I struggled to try to get the handle on these with the limited amount of time that I've spent with these chopsticks. I have 100% respect for you if you are able to cook and plate throughout the entire service with these bad boys. The length plus like the tiny, tiny pin tip on these, you really gotta be skilled to use these. Badassness, five out of five. Category five, price. Hands? My hands are free, so we're just gonna throw up a zero on the chart just for price sake. Tweezers, these are currently $15.90 on jvprints.com. I wanna fully disclose that I'm not getting paid to say anything good or bad by any company about any of these products, just so you guys know that I'm being fully transparent. I've had these tweezers for a long time, $15.90 on these guys, plus shipping depending on where you are. Tea sticks these are the Purple Rain edition. You can go ahead and get these on eatingtools.com in a couple different colors. This edition is $75 bucks and if you get multiple pairs you get a discount plus free shipping so definitely worth picking up if you want to get multiple pairs last up here is the Moribashis the big dogs these are incredibly high quality handmade chopsticks so you're definitely gonna pay for that. These are $200, they're currently sold out on the Eating Tools site. He's got a couple different more kinds with other accents and characteristics. He's got one with Damascus tips on them, which is insane, it's so cool. By far the most expensive out of the bunch here, but you absolutely get what you pay for in design and build quality with these. So with that, that is a little recap of comparing plating chopsticks to tweezers as well as your hands. I hope you got some valuable knowledge if you're a little bit on the fence about buying or considering trying out a new skill. But before you take off, I wanted to give you a few tips that I have certainly learned during my practice with these tools. Tip number one, always be centering. Whenever I would pick these up, I would always find myself grabbing like, picture this as a countertop or a table, and I would always do this move to try to center them to make sure that the tip came together at one certain point so when I pick things up, I know it's gonna be there. Tip number two, and this is exclusive for the Moribashis, don't be afraid to stab. Especially when they come to a point like this, they 
don't really leave an impact on your food, so you don't have to worry about getting a huge hole in them. So if it's a bigger piece of something and you can't open up wide enough to get it, go ahead and stab it and then use your fingers to move it from point A to point B. I found that really valuable. Tip number three, these are a great substitute for a cake tester. At my dinners, I found myself leaving my cake tester in my bag. If you haven't seen my video on how to use one of those, it's right up here. I would often find myself using these in two different orientations either up and down or horizontal, if that makes sense. So I would use them up and down to kind of grab things and pinch, and then I would often use them horizontally with my other hand as kind of like a forklift, so I could lift and then move. Another tip, these are great for mixing things. So if you have any small containers with like a vinaigrette or a sauce or an egg wash, you can use this as almost like a tiny little whisk to mix things up really, really fast. And one of the reasons why I say that these substitute so well for other tools is because I normally store my tools in one of these, like a bain-marie style setup, and because they're so tall, I would often find myself reaching for these as opposed to other tools when I just needed to get something done. Please go say hi to Abe at eatingtools.com or go say hi to Isaiah. I've linked both of their accounts down below so you can go check out their work. It is amazing quality stuff. And trust me, chopsticks just scratch the surface of what these guys do for a living. Have you ever plated with chopsticks before? Do you have any tips that I'm missing out on that I should know for when I want to plate with these tools? Leave them in the comments down below. I'd love to know. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and also turn on that notification bell. I'm starting to go live a little bit more on this channel, so you can get a heads up for that and get all of the newest news. If you've already tuned in to the emulsion that I posted earlier this week, you'll already know this. I am on Patreon now. I want to really up the ante on this channel, start to make more videos, better videos, all for you folks, and I want you to be able to help. So I've just launched that with all the rewards, depending on what tier you're able to participate in. Go ahead and check out the link in the description for that. I have some amazing videos written all the way out, and I would love to get your support so we can make those a reality, and I can share with you some of these amazing amazing videos I've been working on. Don't worry, this isn't me putting up a paywall. I'm still gonna be putting out free content here on YouTube for you guys to enjoy, but think cookbook reviews and walkthroughs, gear giveaways, upped production quality, and all my industry advice that I can give you guys one-on-one. -on -one. All that stuff comes from your financial support on Patreon so I can make more for you folks. As always, I'm Justin Kana. Have a good one.